what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we're actually going to be talking about the shining in this video here today never talked about this fuck this film on this channel never talked about the sequel dr sleep i know you guys who follow me on twitter you see me mention the shining here and there also dr sleep here and there because um uh, the fact that we did get a tremendous sequel to it almost 40 years later from Mike Flanagan, who after seeing Haunted of Hill House, I was like kind of set in mind that that's someone I would love to see explore the shiny universe. And then when it came to be, I, that was just a cherry on top and he did not disappoint there. But getting into Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Now, this movie, from what I remember, was not originally received that well. But then over time, it was appreciated a lot more. I recall the very first time I saw it as a young child, it did stick with me. It was one of those movies that it just stuck with you because of the fact of how there's this growing sense of unease and doom and gloom from the very start. You already know something terrible is going to happen. There's certain interactions between characters that continue to set you in this mindset that something bad is going to happen here but it's not it's not something that is done so so fastly if we know of course what happens in the end it all builds to the ending of what happens with jack and the fact that they were all sheltered in at the overlook and how that impacted him and the fact that jack himself already had his own personal demons that he was struggling with struggling with now stanley kubrick for the most part his direction i think is the month the number one thing people will go to as it pertains to why this film is regarded in a acclaimed status at this point in the sense that what we have here is a film that's structured in a way where almost every other shot from what i can tell now being an older adult and always finding something new i feel like when i watch this movie everything stands out not everything but there's always a shot in particular that stands out as like a way to kind of make it a picture you could frame somewhere in your house or something just a little small detail like that of how kubrick was as a as a filmmaker and again from the very get-go the score from the uh people involved with the score who helped bring that together wendy carlos and rachel elkin the soundtrack that plays over the drive to the overlook with an aerial shot of the car over the rocky mountains and Jack is going to the Overlook to get that job interview, get the position about being the caretaker. The unease that score still manages to give me so many years later. And I remember when they brought it back for the, the drive back in Doctor Sleep. It was just bone chilling. It's like all this nostalgia going back to the time I originally watched the Shiny movie. And again, Mike Flanagan, he, he knocked it out of the park with that sequel. I'm not saying it's perfect, but he did kill it. He did a tremendous job. The Overlook itself and learning about all the things that went on in it that of course it was just adding to the unease the movie just rev it kind of just is taking its time enjoying getting you invested in the people involved while you already know in the back of your head something bad is going to happen to them before they know that you're you're ahead of the game before them they don't know that something bad is going to happen but there's things going on as it pertains to how the film was made that you as the viewer you know that these people are sol they're, they're going to be in for one hell of an ending and that's what we got once we get to the conclusion there's some great hidden meanings that you can always find and great hidden foreshadowing techniques i could say that you can find when watching this movie like for instance there's a maze pattern i believe on jack's tie during the interview and the hallucinations that danny has of course you know that has something to do with the shining and that power that exists in this universe so and they explore that a little bit further and better i would say in dr sleep but the performances again from jack nicholson shelly duvall scatman carruthers danny lloyd who was a tremendous child star in this movie gave a very terrifying uh performance and what he was bringing to the table as it pertains to being a child who's clearly not having a good influence as it pertains to his father and now you factor in the father with the hotel the shining power that he has factored in with the hotel the whole movie is just an unnerving experience from start to finish but you have these characters that are developed in a way in which we know we know that jack is our focus but i think really the character here our final girl shelly duvall her exploration is something i don't think many people talk about here a lot i would say or give her enough credit for shelly duvall she does an amazing job in the role but my thing when i'm watching this movie and i know it's mostly shown to us from jack's perspective 
but with Shelly's character in mind, her character is Wendy. She is in a relationship that she clearly should not be in. We're getting to see it mostly from, I would say, the toxic, toxic individual's perspective, while the person who's continuing to think that they can get better sticks along with them. Uh, I think at one point we learned that he broke Danny's arm by by an accident, but of course he was too aggressive with the child. And it's like an interesting ex exploration of a woman, I would say, learning her self-worth. A overly dramatic one, given what happens at the end of the movie, but I think that arc with Wendy is kind of not talked about enough. It's a good look at how she had to go through all of this to realize that this man is someone that's toxic you need to leave him and that's what ultimately she does at the end of it she leaves i guess you can say her abuser not to say that he was ever really overly abusive with her physically but the way he talked to her of course was one thing we saw that and that was one of the best monologues in the movie as well oh my gosh jack nicholson he is just a powerhouse in this movie the haunting imagery i know the elevator with the the blood sequence with the elevator all of these things just visually beautiful things to see and the constant things that are left up into interpretation they're not really concrete answers you do get answers but not so much to the point where there's one correct answer there's things that i think people can go back and always rewatch and say oh this is what was going on no that was what was going on but then mike flanagan also comes in and doesn't diminish that in any way he just makes his own movie that that keeps in mind the novel aspects of that of that film and the film itself and the novel aspects of Dr. Sleep and his own adaptation of Dr. Sleep. So The Shining is regarded as a classic for plenty of good reasons. I went over a couple just now in this video and you guys can go ahead and let me know why you think The Shining is a classic as well down in the comment section below or why you don't think it's a classic or maybe why you initially didn't think it was a classic but how you came to love it even more as you got older and rewatched it because this movie has so much replay value in terms of always trying to see what does it mean? What does that mean? And all the hidden meanings because kubrick he was a master at that but let me know what you guys think about this video down in the comment section below and if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course and let me know if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video